Hello everyone, welcome to Divine Conversations and welcome to your readings for September 2019. Thank you so much for tuning in. I want to give a big old shout out to all the Virgos out there. Very, very happy birthday to you. We are officially in Virgo season as far as Western astrology is concerned. And I want to give a shout out to the September Libras. Yes, very happy birthday to you guys as well. So please keep in mind that these are general readings. So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. If you'd like to look into your own personal situation please go ahead and email me all the information is in the description box below yeah so for those of you that are new I want to give you a little bit of insight as to these readings on my channel these are not really specific to anything obviously we are doing this by sign but this is not love or career specific okay this is you could think of this as just the the messages that spirit has for you uh, having a conversation or a discussion with spirit about what is going on in your life at this time also keep in mind that just because these are dated for september of 2019 these readings are meant to be timeless yeah so whenever this resonates for you if it's in september if it's after september of 2019 please just take that message if it resonates for you at that time then that's the message for you at this time i i am speaking to the zodiac sign in question here but as a cross watcher you know this could be something that resonates for you as well if you are watching for someone uh, if you're cross watching for someone yeah I would love it if you guys would follow me if you're not already doing so on Instagram you can find me at divine underscore conversations you can also find me on Facebook at uh, facebook.com slash divine conversations 2711 if you would like to book a personal reading with me please just email me um, Instagram would be a good uh, other another option you know to to choose um, but Facebook is not a good option. Like I, I even mentioned this in my video last month. Um, I rarely check my Facebook messages. I don't always get them right away also. So if you're trying to get a reading with me, the best bet is to just find my email address in the description box below and email me there. I also have all of the readings that I offer and their prices and descriptions listed in the description box below. So if you would like a reading, please read through that and then email me. Again, Instagram is a good alternative, but that always isn't the most reliable, okay? The, your best bet, if you would like to get a personal reading with me, is to just email me, okay? With that said, I guess we're ready, so let's get to it. <laughs> Hey there, Sagittarius, Sagimitaz, Sagimitazical. Welcome to your reading for uh, September, for September 2019. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Now, before I go any further, I just want to let you know, you're most likely going to be hearing a lot of noise coming from the street, coming from outside. Um, they are doing construction across the street and they're being super loud about it but hey it's construction but you know what we're not gonna let that stop us we're gonna keep pushing yeah we're gonna push right on through um so your reading for last month was very intense um for august and if you're new to my channel and you didn't ha you haven't seen the sagittarius reading for august of 2019 go ahead and check it out forewarning i did cry um it was a very emotional situation um, but ultimately it was a good thing because it was about coming out of the darkness and healing from past situations, okay? Um, past situations dealing with uh, backstabbing, abandonment, -ish, uh, abandonment, whether that be physically or emotionally, um, and just, you know, facing all of the things that, you know, you might have been hiding from um, and and being uh, growing and healing through that right awesome so um as you can see here there's a whole mess of cards and this is your pre-shuffle energies like i was channeling i was shuffling and i was like all right sagittarius and this literally this whole pile just dumped right out <laughs> ultimately though it is a good thing first of all i do want to point out that you do have the balance between the sun and the moon here okay this is the balance between light and dark good and bad masculine and feminine um, it's also speaking to energies of illumination and coming out of some sort of darkness coming out of some sort of fear also i, I was hearing that specifically um and cycles closing out okay um so what came out at first was this well it all came out together but we're starting with the sun and the five of swords the five of swords is like uh, uh, 
backstabbing, self-sabotaging, or a competition, sabotage from other people, blah, 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 fighting, uh, lose-lose situations. But this is illuminated here for you. There, there is an energy of understanding the fight or understanding the backstabbing nature or element that you have been dealing with um, and associated with. This also is giving me an energy of um, being aware and enlightened towards how, you know, people are being manipulated, okay, um, by self-serving entities, those that wish to, you know, keep people asleep and all that stuff. That's that kind of energy that I'm seeing that this is representing in the Five of Swords. But ultimately, even if you're not on, you know, that wavelength of, you know, uh, being aware of the universal or cosmic... I guess we could call it war that's going on. Um, if this is more of a specific, a personal thing, this is just you being aware of the backstabbing element that may have been in your life, okay? From there, from that point, you have a springboard to move forward. You have the chariot with the page of wands and the page of pentacles. The chariot can represent Cancerian energy. There may be someone around you that... Um, embodies some sort of Cancerian energy or you may have Cancerian energy in your chart but there also may be someone around you that 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 holds this energy that may help influence you towards this new direction but ultimately I do see the chariot as you moving forward gaining that balance again balance between light and dark good and bad sun and moon uh, masculine and feminine in the chariot right going through uh, a transformation, going through some sort of soul searching, understanding yourself better, um, self-awareness and whatnot, and starting on a new path, a new journey. This could also be a new creative project. For some of you, for whatever struggles that you've been going through, you may be able to create some sort of artistic work out of that, yeah? You do have Justice, the Wheel of Fortune, and the Three of Pentacles also with and then there's the moon here but with justice the three of excuse me justice the three of pentacles and the uh, uh the wheel of fortune are talking about uh you doing work uh to master yourself okay self-mastery is what the three of pentacles is i'm also feeling an energy of you working directly with the universe working hand in hand with the universe to bring some sort of change into your life but also the work that you're doing, the self-mastery work that you're doing on your, on, your, in, on your own behalf is bringing great change to you. It is also bringing justice into your life. It's almost as if the universe is congratulating you and rewarding you for the work that you're doing, the work that you have been doing, and the work that, on the ongoing work that you're going to continue to do, okay? And then you have the Knight of Swords here. Moving very quickly, uh, the Knight of Swords energy is definitely an energy of you cutting people places circumstances and things out of your space okay this does feel like a very defensive energy right now um, i don't feel like you're on the offense i do feel like you're on the defense you're ready to fight back anything that wants to come your way and try and stop you basically and and that's that's a good thing all right i am hearing that you do need to be in this defensive energy to a certain extent but try to keep that tempered try to keep it in alignment with who you are and what you wish to accomplish don't really allow it to to take you overboard and you know you're just you're you're now entering into a shoot first ask questions later type energy you know you want to keep your wits about you you want to keep your eyes open and you want to make sure that you're keeping your boundaries in place as to not allow um sources of energy that wish to tear you down into your life okay excellent let me give this one more shuffle, Sag, and then we're going to get into the rest of your reading. All right, here we go. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for all Sagittarians, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for the month of September 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, so Sag, I'm going to give this five shuffles, but I do want to let you know already 
I'm seeing purple, which is the color of the crown chakra, but it's also the color of divine wisdom. And I'm seeing red, which is your root chakra or the earth plane, the physical three dimensional dimensions uh, and reality. What I'm seeing, what I'm picking up with this is there is definitely some sort of spiritual energy, spiritual knowledge and understanding downloads from the universe even that you have gained, that you are continuously gaining, that you are receiving, and that you are grounding into your life and making some sort of physical changes because of it. Keep doing that. Keep going in that direction because you, I'm hearing you're going to find great stability, financial success, from understanding what it is the universe is showing to you, is teaching you, the, the, the downloads that you're getting, the understandings that you're, you're receiving, the alchemy that is happening in relation to the spiritual wealth of knowledge that you are gaining that is helping change your life. Okay, so now Spirit actually is saying three shuffles. So we're gonna do three shuffles for you, Sag for your month of September 2019. Sag, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. One last shuffle here. All right. Boop. All right, Sag, overall energy. You've got the Eight of Wands. That is excellent. This is a minor, car, a minor arcana version of the chariot energy. This is a very fast moving energy. There could be a lot of communication. Um, I, I'm, I'm picking up an energy of um, maybe sending out resumes, trying to communicate with people, working on getting a new job or something like that. Um, sharing your message, sharing your light, sharing the insight that you're getting. Uh, Eight of Wands is also about communication. This could be you communicating with Seek or seeking out soul family or people that you vibe with, people that you can have an, uh, an understanding with, people that you can have deep conversations with. This also could be, especially if we're carrying over from the reading from August, this could be you communicating to some of the people that may have been in your life that may have, you know, caused some turmoil. This could be you communicating with them, clearing the air, making amends, something like that. It could also be you communicating your story, sharing your story, sharing your light um, in an effort to help those who have been through something similar. That's beautiful. I'm also picking up on an energy of um, just being clear, honest and truthful, but also because I, I literally just heard that, but also having just a clear space. The air is clear for you to start moving in a, in a new direction. OK. I'm feeling some sort of freedom with this Eight of Wands energy, whether that's liberation from things in the past or if it's just like currently you have the freedom to take your life in whatever direction you want to go in. OK, underneath the Eight of Wands, you do have, wow, the Nine of Cups. OK, satisfaction. OK, wish fulfillment even. Uh, I feel you being very content in the month of September or for whenever this is this is resonating for you. Um, Yeah, especially with the Eight of Wands energy, this just feels like you have the clear and open space to do whatever it is that you want. All right, 1111 on the counter, there it is, boop. Okay, underneath the Nine of Cups, you have, okay, the Five of Cups, and underneath the Five of Cups, you have the Five of Wands. All right, all right, so everything's not as all happy-go-lucky as it may seem, or maybe it is, Sag, maybe it is. Because what I'm feeling like here is, yes, with the Five of Wands, there is some sort of differing of opinion. Um, there is some sort of conflict, some sort of confusion, uh, differings, yeah, differing of opinion. There could be some sort of internal conflict. The internal conflict is what I'm picking up on the most, and it does have to do with this Five of Cups energy. OK, but this five of cups energy is in the past, just like what we were talking about last month. I do feel like you guys are overcoming whatever heartbreak, pain, uh, sadness, remorse, whatever, guilt or shame. I don't know. 
I do feel like you're overcoming this Five of Cups energy. But the conflict here is coming in terms of moving forward with your life. And it has to do with some people from your past, I'm feeling, or circumstances from your past. There is some sort of allegiance. I'm feeling like some of you have some very loyal tendencies, okay? And that's making it hard for you to move on, even though what you might be moving on from, people, places, circumstances, family, friends, whatever, even though they may have been toxic towards you, even though they may have really been quite destructive, you feel some sort of allegiance and you're having trouble really separating yourself from it. But keep in mind, Sag, that whatever has spilled over is toxic and is no longer needed in your life, all right? All is not lost, okay? Two of Cups is still behind you. For some of you, you may be connecting with someone. That Two of Cups may represent a relationship that is growing as a result of you having dealt with these toxic energies. Now, for others of you that could be having conversations with people that may have hurt you in the past, this is like wrapping it up. And there could be still, there still could be some differing of opinion and like what you experienced versus what people on the outside ex uh, perceived of your experience. But honestly, I wouldn't get wrapped up in that. Like say your piece, make your amends or whatnot, but don't try and really like argue the point. If they're not trying to see what you are, what your, your point of view is, where you're coming from, don't try and force the issue. Just let it go and move on because ultimately you have this nine of cups energy here. You have this satisfaction. And if you're not feeling this satisfaction right now, you have the foundation within yourself, the ability to feel this sense of satisfaction. You've just got to let go of the pain, of the hurt, and of the differing of opinion. For some of you specifically, you do have to let go of the, the need, the desire to get others to see things your way or see the, to, 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 to admit to or perceive or understand the pain that you've been through. If they're not going to do it, if they're refusing to do it, or if they just can't do it, if they're just not seeing it, don't worry about it. Just let it go. All right? Just let it go and move forward because you have this satisfaction at your disposal. It's within your grasp. All right, Sag? Excellent. Let's get into the rest of your reading here. First half, second half of the reading. You could look at it as the first half, second half of your month. If it resonates that way, go ahead and take it. I recommend you see it as the first half, second half of the reading because time is an illusion and energies are fluid. Yeah, here we go. First set of surrounding energies in the first half of your reading here, Sagittarius. You've got the Seven of Swords. Whoa. There are definitely some people around you that are trying to get away with something. That could be people from the past. So like people that you are maybe having a discussion with, all right? They're being deceptive. I do feel specifically that there are some people that just don't want to own up to what they have done, to take responsibility for their actions, to even acknowledge their actions. That's the biggest thing that I'm getting here. Whether these are people from your past or people that are currently around you, like part of your current circumstances, somebody's trying to get away with something. All right. Seven of Swords is coupled with Four of Pentacles. They're standing their ground. Yeah, look, look, Sag, if these people, if these people, this person, whatnot, whatever, if they don't want to let go, if they don't want to open up, if they're being stubborn, if they're just sticking to their guns, even though, they're, even though they know they're wrong, just... Turn around and walk away. I am feeling cautioned to caution. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling compelled to caution you. You might not really want to turn your back on these people. There could be, like, I'm getting an image of you turning your back and walking away and them trying to, like, you know, backstab you, get some last digs in as you release yourself or as you remove yourself from the situation in order to um, help themselves feel better or make themselves look better, be careful of that. Because what I'm feeling with this Seven of Swords and Four of Pentacles energy, first of all, I don't feel like this is you. But if this is you, Sag, be careful, all right? 
Um, but I don't feel like this is you. I feel like these are people around you. It's almost like they're desperate to keep up some sort of face, to keep up some sort of appearance um, because they've been lying this whole time or they've been acting in ways that are unscrupulous, all right? But that is not your problem, nor is it your issue. That's the same thing, <laughs> all right? It's not your problem. Just be careful not to make yourself so vulnerable that, they're, that they are allowed to like get a, a last bit of flesh out of you. They don't deserve any more flesh, <laughs> okay? Second set of surrounding energies for you in the first half of your reading, Sag, you have the hanged man. This is you. This is you. Uh, this is also Piscean energy. But I feel like some of you are even questioning, what does this all mean? I just feel like with this, with this um, hanged man energy, you really are becoming a very, very wise individual. You may have already gotten to this point. I do kind of feel like this, this is not you having, this is not you being in a hanged man state. This is you having been in a hanged man state. All right. I'm not reading reversals. So this very well could have been a reversed card, which would mean that you're coming out of the hermit state. Or it also could mean a reversal could mean that it's blockage. But here I feel like if it were reversed, it would it would mean that you are coming out of a, a, a hanged man state in which you have reached enlightenment, in which you have gained a new perspective. That's what I'm feeling like here. All right. And it's in direct opposition to this energy with the Seven of Swords and the Four of Pentacles of these people around you. You really don't have to do much of anything, Sag, other than just shine the light of the wisdom that you have gained. Now, be careful with that because shining your light is going to make you a target. All you got to do is defend yourself. I'm not saying don't shine your light so that you're not a target. I'm saying shine your fucking light, but defend yourself because you will become a target for those that wish, that wish to extinguish the light, okay? Just forewarning there. But you are, have gained some really deep insight. And for some of you, this is not necessarily just universal wisdom. This is wisdom of, within your own self and wisdom about the life, the three-dimensional life that you are living here, all right? There's just a, a strong, deep understanding. Take it how it resonates for you. Uh, the Hanged Man is coupled with the Empress. Fucking right, Sagittarius. This could be you embodying the Divine Feminine Energy. This could be you um, integrating more Divine Feminine Energy into your life. But also, what I'm picking up here, the strongest, is through this enlightenment, you have been connected or you have established a deeper connection to the universal mother and to the abundance of the universe. It's like you've reached some sort of nirvana in a sense that is allowing you to move forward in your life and to create exactly what it is that you want. This is definitely a deep universal understanding of how we are all connected, how we are all loved unconditionally, how we are all connect, uh, uh, have access to the abundance of the universe. We're all abundant. This could also be um, giving birth to or gestating a new life, a new physical existence for yourself. Okay. Your uh, challenge in the first half of your reading here, Sag, you have the High Priestess now. All right, so your challenge really is integrating the lessons that the universe that is, is sending you, the downloads, okay? You might be getting a lot of them. You might be having trouble making sense of all of them. That's okay. You don't have to make sense of it right away. It'll come with time. You just have to allow yourself to integrate it. So what I feel like is you just need to Maybe take some time to rest as much as you can, but really what you need to do is just allow yourself to settle in. That's all. There really is no extra step that you need to take. The information is already being given to you. It's, you're, already, you're already receiving the downloads. There's nothing else that you need to do right now other than just allow it to take hold. Allow it to integrate into your life. Allow it to settle in and allow yourself to be able to make sense of it naturally. You don't have to force this to happen, okay? The High Priestess is coupled with 
The Nine of Pentacles. Oh, man. You are, right now, Sag, you are in a process of integrating the universal knowledge that you need that will help you to be as independent as you have always wanted to be, always known that you were, or the independence that you are now ready to take hold of and to express and to embody. You are de there and for some of you. For, okay, I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of getting two main parts here. For some of you, you're in the process of really standing on your own. Okay, you are in this nine of pentacles energy right now. You're in the very beginning stages of it, and you're integrating the lessons and the information that you would need to allow this to really take hold, to allow this independence and autonomy and sovereignty to take hold. For others of you, you are starting to enter into this process. So you're starting to get the downloads, starting to get the understanding, starting to get the, the insight that is going to allow you to step in to this and start embodying this Nine of Pentacles energy. So yes, that's your challenge. It's gonna be challenging because it's changing your life. It's changing your world. It's changing your environment. It's changing your relationship to yourself so that you can embody more of this Nine of Pentacles energy, this autonomy, this um, this sovereignty, this independence. Uh, but it's challenging because it's challenging because it's a change, but it's also a blessing because it's bringing you towards greater autonomy. This is a challenge, but it feels like a good challenge. It's, it's not something that's really all that stressful or difficult. It's just a change. That's what's making it a challenge, okay? Beautiful. Closing message or potential outcome in the first half of your reading here, Sag. You have, well, look at that. The Two of Cups. For some of you, this is leading you to a partnership, a really great relationship. For others of you, this is the balance between the masculine and feminine energy within you. This is your own balance and your own relationship with yourself. Wow. Now, if this is leading you to a relationship, it's a relationship that is in alignment with your independence, your autonomy, your sovereignty. These are two people that harmonize with each other. The balance, there's, there's, a, there's, there's a counterpart. There's a masculine counterpart. There's a feminine counterpart. There's an individual that embodies more of the masculine energy. There's an individual that, balances, that embodies, embodies more of the feminine energy. I don't feel like you two, um, you may not see everything exactly the same, but your energies definitely harmonize with each other and make like this really beautiful, beautiful symphony even. But it's because you two have been doing your work. The individuals, the counterparts have been doing their work and now they're coming together. If that resonates with you, if you are um, connecting with someone, if you are manifesting a relationship, whether you are conscious of it or not. For others of you, this is your own soulmate relationship. This is you integrating your pieces and becoming a much more whole version of yourself than you may have been in the past, especially if you resonated with last month's reading, okay? Two of Cups is coupled with the Four of Cups. Interesting. Very interesting. Now, for some of you, the message that I'm getting here is that you are being handed some sort of love, some sort of love offer. And it could be, the energies could be a bit of an unrequited energy, but I feel like if it is an unrequited energy, it is because someone doesn't quite feel worthy enough. Someone doesn't quite feel strong enough. Someone doesn't quite feel confident enough. That's what I'm seeing in this Four of Cups energy. I'm seeing that someone is hesitating to take this cup because of circumstances from the past. For others of you, you are manifesting some sort of balance, some sort of integration, some sort of relationship, whether it be internal or external, in the face of some sort of rejection in the past. Definitely, especially if you resonated with last month's reading, okay? Take this opportunity is what I'm hearing. If something is being offered to you, 
Don't let it go to waste. Don't let it slip away. Don't let this be a missed opportunity. Also, don't focus so much on what the future holds with it. Be focused in the now. What does this feel like now? Okay? And just ride that wave and allow it just allow it to take you where it's going to go. Again, don't allow if something is being offered towards you, if something is coming towards you, don't allow it to slip away. Take advantage of it while it's still in front of you, okay? Getting into the second half of your reading here, first set of surrounding energies for you, Sag. You have the Page of Cups, a new love offer, or a new emotional reality, okay? Almost as if you've hit the emotional reset button. This also could be you getting in touch with your inner child, doing the work that you would need to do in order to heal from the past hurts, from the past circumstances, Five of Cups, yes? Page of Cups is coupled with, yeah, the Three of Wands. Ooh, love at a distance. Love at a distance. Three of Wands can talk about travel. It can talk about crossing seas. Um, also, the Three of Wands is you being on your path, uh, spiritual enlightened, uh, a spiritual path, or just a path that it resonates with your soul, whether you res uh, identify as a spiritualist or not. Um, the Three of Wands is also continuing with the momentum of a choice that has been made, uh, waiting for a return on an investment. It could also symbolize doing the work to get to some sort of goal here, right? So a ship may have come in, but, that, and, but you may not necessarily have a dock. Right. Or maybe you need to build a dock so that you can so that the, you can actually get to the ship or you got to take your rowboat out there and paddle onto the ship. Or you could wait for them to get to the to the shore. But why do that? Things would be much faster if you just took some action on your own. Right. OK. That's a really nice thing. That's really, really good. <laughs> Love at a distance. Yeah. There could be an overseas relationship. There could be a long distance relationship. But I feel like if that's the case, I feel like it's something that's growing and budding. It's in like it's it's in the beginning stages. But it absolutely is in alignment with you, regardless of again, regardless of how it might turn out. Don't focus on so much on how it, what the future holds. Focus on what it is feels like for you now. Focus on what it's bringing you now. And let that just develop and see where it takes you. Be present in the moment. And I'm not saying to completely disregard the future, but still stay as present in the moment as you can, all right? Second set of surrounding energies in the second half of your reading here, uh, Sag, you have the Emperor. Well, would you look at that? You have the Emperor and the Empress in the same position. I do feel like... For the most part, this is you, Sag. It's either you or it's a counterpart. So if you are more of the feminine, then you're up here. All right, this is the feminine if we're talking counterparts. This is the feminine, this is the masculine. For some of you, masculines out there, your chat, the, 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 the the pain and the turmoil that you've been through with this Pisces, with, well, the Pisces energy. I keep wanting to say Pisces. You have Pisces in um, the Hanged Man and also in the High Priestess, potentially. Um, but with the Hanged Man energy, what it is, whatever it is you've been through it has led you to some sort of feminine counterpart. And so now down here, I do see you, if you're the masculine in this, whether you're a man or a woman, it doesn't matter, we're talking energy. I do see you taking your power back, taking some sort of action, um, making some sort of moves to improve your physical life, your physical manifestation, to improve the elements of your domain, being the master of your domain. I really feel like there is some sort of action, strong, strongly guided action that you're going to take and it might be influenced by love. The Emperor is coupled with ah, the Queen of Swords. Woo! All right. This in and of itself is a balance between masculine and feminine energy. And what I feel like here is 
from the guise of you being the master of your own domain and taking your power back, standing true to yourself and standing firm in your, in your abilities, the Queen of Swords energy is that element that literally just cuts everything superfluous out of your way in order for you to continue to strive forward with this uh, Emperor energy. This is clearing away the... I'm, I'm literally seeing somebody clearing away vines and overgrowth in order to get to where it is they're trying to go here with this Page of Cups, Three of Wands energy, all right? That's beautiful. That's definitely a balance between the masculine and feminine. Your challenge in the second half of your reading here, you have the Three of Swords. And this actually, I'm feeling like this is a fear, especially if you are connecting with someone else on a romantic level. There is fear of of hurt, of being hurt and fear of pain, fear of being heartbroken that stems from your past. Okay. The challenge is to really overcome what it is that has left you heartbroken so that you can open up to love again. And that doesn't necessarily mean romantic love because spirit is saying this is also just universal love, just being open to love again. And I just saw 33, 33 on, on the counter and it's card number three here and it's about to be 11, 11 <laughs> right now where I am as I'm recording this. It's kind of funny. Three of Swords in your challenge is coupled with the Ace of Wands. Yeah. In, oh, there it is, 11-11. Inspiration through the heartbreak. I feel like some of you have this desire to move in some sort of direction, whether that's creatively, romantically. Something has inspired you. Or spirit is asking you, you're challenged to allow your heartbreak to inspire you to move in a different direction. See this heartbreak differently. Instead of seeing this heartbreak as something that, has, that is holding you back, see it as something that can help spring you forward in a new direction. See it as an element of learning through the contrast. So you experienced something. It was definitely something. And it was something that did not make you feel very good. Well, okay, great. Use that as a springboard to seek out experiences and opportunities to experience uh, and, and, and yeah, to experience things that will make you feel good. Don't allow the past heartbreak to hold you back. That is the challenge here, okay? Closing message or potential outcome in the second half of your reading here is sad. You've got the three of pentacles again. Wait. Did the Three of Pentacles come out in your pre-shuffle? Maybe I'm thinking about Morning Coffee. If you're new to my channel, go ahead and check out Morning Coffee. They're daily readings. I love them. They're fun. <laughs> but um, I can't remember. I, I don't remember now. But the Three of Pentacles is self-mastery. And the message here is continue the work that you're doing to build yourself. Con yes, 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 it did come out in your pre-shuffle. Continue to do the work that you've been doing. Continue to work hand in hand with the universe to rebuild your life. Because you're absolutely going in the right direction and you're going to be successful. Three of Pentacles is coupled with... Ooh, the Six of Cups. Soulmates. The past. This is also you rebuilding from your childhood or rebuilding from the past. Uh, there's a strong, there is a strong message coming through with this Three of Pentacles and the um, Six of Cups. The universe is working with you to align you with, with a soulmate here. There isn't much work, there isn't much physical work that you need to do other than working on yourself. Allow the universe to um, handle all the details for you, okay? Ooh, Sag, that's beautiful. I do want to point out, even though we are talking about, for some of you, aligning with a soulmate, you don't have the lovers here yet, but that's because right now the focus is you. 
The focus is on getting you on your track or getting you further down your track. But even though the focus is on you, there is, for some of you, there is still a partnership that's kind of like, I heard just around, just around the bend, just around the corner, it's on the horizon, it's like hovering around you, it's like orbiting you somehow, or maybe you're orbiting it, something, something like that, it's around. It's definitely around. And there's a strong message that I'm getting here from this, um, um, from the hanged man and the empress, that whatever it is you're going through, it's leading you to a counterpart, a soulmate. And, all right, and in, you do kind of have what would be represented by the lovers here with the emperor and the empress. All right, this is the divine masculine and the divine feminine energies. Now, this could be that the both within you or it's your alignment to an external counterpart. And to be quite honest, before you can align with someone, a counterpart in the external, you would need to have that alignment internally. And that's what I was seeing, what was coming forward for you um, in your pre-shuffle between the sun and the moon. Yeah? I just saw 11-11 again, 38-11. Hmm. All right, let's close out your reading here, Sag, with Oracle Guidance for you for your month of September. Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Last shuffle here. Whoops. All right. Let's see what we've got for you, Sag. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for your month of September. Closing message, please. Spirit, Oracle Guidance for Massage and Metazicals. There it is. Two of them, just one. Just one. Ah, yes. Okay. We have card number 20. Softly, softly, the tender touch. Um, and then also underneath that, I do want to show you, underneath that, you had the relax the hold of darkness and be at cause, which talks about not allowing negativity or darkness to hinder you, to stop you in your tracks. Yes. Where is the crystal that I was using? There. Okay. But your official Oracle guidance here for your month of September is softly, softly, the tender touch. Okay. Here we go. The feminine wisdom of gentleness can assist you now. We are at a point in life where we want to attain greater things, but don't necessarily have, I'm sorry, when we are at a point in life where we want to attain greater things, but don't necessarily have a proportionately greater supply of energy at our disposal, it is time to work smarter rather than harder. This is the way of feminine wisdom. However, a cultural ignorance of the, feminine may of the feminine way currently prevails. We are generally taught that the more force we use, the more we try to make things happen, the more we will achieve. The feminine way is not about force, nor is it about driving, striving, pushing, or grabbing at what we can in order to create. It is about inviting what we wish for to come into the space we have provided for it, internally and in our lives. This message cultivates more energy, causes less stress, and attracts what it is desired. It is manifestation by invitation rather than by will or force. There is an old story that the sun and the wind were debating about who was more powerful. After boasting about their prowess, they made a wager. The ma a man walked down the street with a coat on. The wind and the sun decided that whomever could force the coat off the man was the most powerful. The wind began demonstrating its impressive power. It blew and blew and caught underneath the coat, pulling it and nearly ripping it right off the man. But the man wrapped his coat around himself more tightly and protected himself against the force of the wind. Eventually, perhaps temporarily out of puff, the wind gave up. The sun took over. He shone down, becoming brighter and brighter until the man slipped off his coat, slung it over his shoulder, and walked down the street, quite possibly wondering what was happening with the weather that day. The wind t attempted to do by force what the sun was able to do by being. You are being asked to surrender your for 
forcefulness, your determination, and your intense activity, even if it's just for this moment? Does this mean that you have to surrender the goals you were chasing through those ende endeavors? N certainly not. This is not about letting go of achievement. It's about understanding the process of manifestation in a more intelligent way. There is a way of creating that gives you energy and doesn't leave you utterly worn out. It is about allowing what you want to come to you. Be, you, be yourself absolutely, naturally, and with ease. Shine your light and allow your presence to invite that which you wish to receive. It is about cultivating an energetic affinity with what you seek rather than feelings of lack and need. Do you see the subtle but important difference? To feel that you are already naturally abundant, I'm sorry, to feel that you are already a naturally abundant being who gratefully invites more of what you want into your life is rather different to feeling lack, fear, and wishing your world would change. It is a bit like dressing for the job you want, even if it's not yet the job you have. You energetically embody what you wish to attract more into your uh, more of into your life. Like attracts like. This oracle brings you a message. You don't need to push quite so hard to receive what is naturally coming to you. Your quote push comes from a place of uncertainty over whether or not you will succeed. You need to relax and not have and have more faith in yourself. All things come in time, rightfully and according to great loving wisdom. You are not immune to this. You shall have your time to shine too. Rebel against any voice of fear within you or around you that tells you otherwise. It is okay to become softer, to feel the energy of what you wish to attract into your life and to act as much as you can as though, you, as though it is already that way. You are not fantasizing or daydreaming or failing to live in the real world if you do this. You are actually working with the feminine art of manifestation through gentle beingness and attraction. As you soften into becoming what you are seeking, what you wish for will not be able to resist your shining, inviting presence. This oracle also comes with the special message that you have been working very, very hard. You have learned much and accomplished much, but it is now time to change your approach. Let go of any force in your approach to creation now. Everything serves a purpose, and learning the benefits and limitations of the more forceful way of manifesting, manifestation through effort and willpower will be a use, was, a, I'm sorry, was a useful lesson. However, if you were to continue with that approach, it would stop working for you because you are now beginning to create on a far grander scale that is beyond what an individual can manifest through willpower alone. You are individually creating through your healing and art, but also contributing globally to new consciousness through your own spiritual growth. You are part of a global healing manifestation process. You are, through your way of being in the world, helping to birth a new awareness. This new way will heal the human heart and bring it back into balance with nature. This is essential for the human soul to survive, flourish, and to cooperatively nurture the earth rather than destroy her natural resources. You may or may not be consciously aware of the extent to which this new way of manifesting through receiving rather than taking can actually help all of humanity, but nonetheless, it is playing an important role in greater human evolution. It is the power of attraction, of magnetism, rather than, than that of striving and force that will replenish your energy and restore your body, mind, and heart after your struggle. This change in approach will encourage the shift from head to heart that is essential for your individual well-being and for your greater human evolution. You need to heal so that you can help heal, how you can help the world to heal. Does this give you absolute permission now in your own mind to take an easier approach to your sacred, rebellious, creative manifestation? I sure hope so. So there you have it, Sag. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hopefully that was helpful for you. Again, if you'd like a look into your own personal situation, please don't hesitate to email me. All of the information is in the description box below. But with that, I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading for the month of October. Yeah? Take care. Bye.